We now move on to the second module where as we mentioned earlier uh, in the uh, course outline, here we discuss some very important fundamental concepts. Okay? These concepts are probably already familiar to you, uh, you, might, you probably may have encountered them in your uh, high school physics. But um, what we will try to do now is understand some of the subtleties associated with these concepts. We will refresh the concept and then discuss some of the subtleties uh, associated with these concepts. So, we start with the definition of a thermodynamic system. Uh, now, defining a, a system is a crucial first step in any thermodynamic analysis where we are going to adopt the uh, system approach. In case we are going to adopt the control volume approach, then we should of course define the control volume before we can proceed with the analysis. So, let us assume that we are adopting a system approach. So, defining a system is a crucial first step for the analysis. Okay. Now, a thermodynamic system uh, is defined as follows. Uh, it is a quantity of matter of fixed mass and identity on which attention is focused for study. Everything external to the system is referred to as the surroundings and the system and the surroundings together constitute the universe. Now, heat and work may cross a system boundary, but not mass. Okay. Um, let us explore this definition uh, further in greater detail. We will uh, dissect the definition and try to understand each and every uh, aspect of this uh, definition. Notice uh, importantly that the last sentence, okay, heat and work may cross a system boundary but not mass tells you that uh, in the system approach or indeed in thermodynamics, heat and work are interactions that the system has with the surroundings which means that whenever a system uh, interacts with the surroundings, uh, there can be a transfer of work or there can be a transfer of heat. Okay? So, for heat and work interaction to be present, the system must interact with the surroundings. That is a very important uh, idea to remember that heat and work are external interactions of the system with the surroundings. Okay? Certain important uh, points uh, to be noted uh, with this definition. Number one, a valid thermodynamic system need not necessarily be useful for analysis. In other words, you can define a system which is valid, but one which is actually not useful for analysis because it is uh, so difficult to uh, actually carry out analysis with this system. It is valid nonetheless, but it is not really suitable for analysis purposes, that is quite possible. And the second point is that it is possible to define more than one valid system for a given problem. So, the definition of a thermodynamic system for analysis, for analysis of a particular problem is by no means unique. We can actually define uh, several different systems for the same problem. As long as they are valid systems, each one of them can be used for the purpose of analysis. Okay? Normally, uh, the choice of which one to use is guided by the information that is given in the problem, the information that is sought and the ease with which we can do the analysis with the particular system. So, that is generally what determines which choice uh, we actually use for carrying out the analysis. Let us try to illustrate uh, the uh, idea of a system uh, with uh, several examples. Okay? The first one, simplest possible example. So, we have a gas which is uh, contained within a vertical piston cylinder assembly. So, we basically have a cylinder which is closed at the top by a piston. So, we add heat to the gas until uh, it expands to a certain volume. Okay? Now, we wish to define a thermodynamic system. Uh, suitable for analysis of this particular problem. Okay? So, here we can see the piston cylinder assembly, uh, you can see the uh, uh, you can see the piston, the gas that is contained inside, it can be it need not be a gas, it can be any uh, working substance. So, this is the cylinder, a mass is placed on this to maintain a certain pressure, we add heat to, uh, to the gas and it expands to a, a final volume like this and we want to carry out a thermodynamic analysis of uh, this uh, problem. 
Now, uh, definition of a, a system uh, for this problem is relatively straightforward. In fact, it is a no brainer. The uh, system that is outlined using the dashed line here uh, is um, the, the one that uh, immediately springs to mind and that is a valid system. Notice that uh, this system as you can see here uh, initially encloses uh, a certain amount of gas that was inside the uh, apparatus and then as the heat is added the system boundary also deforms this boundary keeps moving up along with the uh, along with the gas and it, so that it always contains the same amount of mass okay so it is a valid system primarily because it contains the same amount of mass so the most important part of the definition is that it must, it must contain the same amount of mass throughout not only just the initial and beginning uh, final stages, but throughout the process. So, the system that is shown in grey, so the dashed line is the system boundary and uh, whatever is enclosed within the system boundary is actually the system. So, the system shown in grey contains the same amount of matter from the beginning to the end of the process and it thus satisfies the definition given above. Okay? We will uh, discuss the, uh, the notion of identity little bit later. For now, we assume that you know, identity remains the same here. Obviously, we can see that the identity remains the same. The mass contained by the system is also the same. So, it is a valid thermodynamic system that may be used for analysis. Now, as I already said, some parts of the system boundary remain fixed. Uh, during the process while other parts actually uh, move uh, or deform during the process. So, for instance, as you can see here, um, uh, this part of the system boundary. So, these three parts which are adjacent to the cylinder actually remain stationary during the process, but this part of the system boundary which is adjacent to the piston moves along with the, uh, along with the piston and undergoes uh, deformation as the process takes place. The shape is retained, but the word deformation is used to indicate that it does not remain stationary, but it changes during the process. So, uh, so some parts of the system are fixed, some parts of the system deform in such a manner as to always contain the same mass throughout, okay? which means that we need to know the system boundary not only at the beginning of the process and the end of the process, we need to know the system boundary throughout the process. Okay, that is very, very uh, important. So, we need to know how the system boundary deforms as the process takes place. So, we need to know the system boundary throughout. Okay. This is a very, very important requirement because if uh, the system boundary is to be known throughout, then the process must take place sufficiently slowly that we are able to identify the system boundary at every instant in time. Okay. In other words, uh, let us say that I am adding heat. And I add heat in such a way that you know a uh, huge amount of heat is added to the gas. Then the gas expands uh, violently and uh, you know the gas begins to move rapidly. So, what happens then is that I will not be able to keep track of the system boundary during the intermediate stages because it is moving so fast. We may argue in this case that the system boundary is always uh, at the bottom of the piston. Uh, but because it is moving so rapidly, the pressure, temperature and volume at the intermediate stages will not be known. The reason why we demand that you know the, um, uh, the process must take place slowly is to know the uh, system boundary at every instant, not only that, but also the pressure, temperature and other properties in the system at every instant in time, which is why I must add the heat slowly so that the system boundary deforms slowly and at every instant. I can uh, get uh, an unambiguous value for all the properties that I am interested in. Okay? So, the requirement that the system boundary should be known throughout implicitly means that the process must take place slowly. It also ensures that the pressure, temperature and volume are measurable at every instant and uniform throughout the system. Notice that if I allow a rapid expansion, then uh, pressure in uh, say this part of the system boundary during the process may be different from the pressure that I am measuring in this part of the system boundary because the gas there is moving with a considerable velocity. So, the temperatures may be different, pressures may be different at different parts which means that I cannot actually come up with 
with an unambiguous value for the properties if the process is very very rapid. So by demanding that the process be slow, I am ensuring that uh, the property values uh, are known and measurable at every instant in time and uniform throughout the system. The um, next point that we uh, that we would like to observe is the following, wherever there is deformation of the system boundary during the process, we can easily uh, intuitively understand that there is work interaction between the system and the surroundings. Okay? For instance, this part of the system boundary is the only thing that deforms. So, you can see that this part of the system boundary is moving up like this which means that we intuitively understand that this part of the system boundary is actually doing work against the surroundings. So, it is pushing the surroundings away. So, the deformation is actually uh, creating a work interaction between the system and the surroundings and since the system boundary is expanding, we can understand that the system is actually doing work on the surroundings. In contrast, if the system boundary were to be uh, contracting, then we can easily see that the surroundings are actually doing work on the system. So, the important point is any deformation of the system boundary results in a work interaction. Either the system does work on the surroundings if the system boundary expands or the surroundings do work on the system if the system boundary contracts. Okay? So, that is very, uh, that is very important and uh, let us just summarize that here. So, uh, either the system is doing work as in this example where the piston and the mass are being lifted and the atmosphere is also being pushed upwards. Or if, it, uh, if the piston comes down or if the uh, system boundary uh, contracts, then that means the surroundings are doing work on the system. Uh, we will look at all this uh, with uh, several examples so that these subtle ideas become clearer. Okay. So, as we said the system boundary expands in the case of the former when work is done by the system namely and contracts in the case of the latter. This sort of work interaction is called displacement work and we will derive and uh, we will develop an expression later on uh, for calculating displacement work of a system. As I mentioned earlier this system uh, is not unique to this problem. We can also define alternative valid systems, some of which may be useful for analysis, some of which may not be actually be useful for analysis. Okay? For instance, we can define a system which contains the gas and the piston. We can also define a system which contains the gas, piston and the mass or we can define the atmospheres to be the system. Everything external to it uh, may be defined as a system. So, we can define this the gas alone as a system or the gas and the piston as a system. Let me just show that. So, we may define the gas and the piston as the system or we may define uh, the gas, the piston and the mass as our system or I may also define the atmosphere as my system for instance like this. So, that may also be defined as a system. All these are valid systems and depending on what is actually asked for in the particular problem and what is given, uh, some of these systems may prove to be easier to work with than others. And again, so as I said, the decision or the choice is made based on the problem statement and what is required in the problem. So, in the next example, we have an initially empty balloon which is inflated from a rigid vessel. So, we have a cylinder or a rigid vessel which contains let us say uh, air at a high pressure and, um, uh, and we inflate the balloon uh, using the uh, from the cylinder. Okay? So, we have, uh, we have kept a valve on top of the cylinder, we open the valve a crack and we uh, fill the balloon with air uh, from the cylinder. We wish to carry out a thermodynamic analysis of uh, this particular problem uh, using the system approach. So, we would like to define an appropriate system for this problem. So, here uh, we can see again the dashed line uh, shows the uh, system. So, you can see that uh, initially the balloon is uh, empty. So, the dashed line contains the vessel plus the empty balloon and as the balloon expands you can see that this part of the system boundary also expands along with the balloon to enclose always the same amount of mass. Okay? So, you can see that uh, the, um, uh, the system uh, outlined by the dashed line uh, 
always contains the same amount of mass and you can see that uh, all these parts of the system remain stationary while this part of the system boundary uh, deforms from this shape and size to this shape and size finally. So, the system shown in grey which is enclosed by the dashed line uh, contains the same amount of matter throughout and hence is a valid thermodynamic system. Okay. Now, how do we um, uh, ensure that the process takes place slowly? You may recall that we, uh, we demanded that the process should take place slowly so that the system boundary is known at all uh, instants in time and the properties of the system are also known at all instants uh, during the process. So, the uh, process is made uh, slow by uh, virtue of the fact that a valve is present here. So, the valve ensures that it is since we open the valve only a crack, the valve ensures that uh, resistance is uh, provided uh, between the high pressure air in the cylinder and the balloon so that the expansion process takes place slowly. Okay. You can you should also realize that uh, in this uh, particular case the system has two distinct pieces. One is this piece inside the vessel, the other one is the balloon itself. The pressure in the balloon is different from the pressure in the vessel. So, can we then argue that macroscopic uh, approach is invalid? After all, macroscopic approach said that the pressure, uh, temperature and all properties should be the same everywhere in the system. Notice that here macroscopic assumption is still not violated because of the presence of the valve. So, there is a mechanical valve which allows uh, uh, pressure difference to exist in different parts of the system. So, that is allowed. Had the valve not been there, obviously the pressure would have been the same throughout. So, the presence of the valve uh, ensures that uh, pressure difference can be maintained without violating the macroscopic assumption. So, let us summarize what we have said so far. The part of the system boundary which is outside the vessel expands during the process and since it expands uh, we may infer. So, remember it was uh, uh, it occupied it, uh, almost 0 volume in the beginning and then uh, it increases in volume which means the atmosphere is being pushed aside. So, that means the uh, system that we have identified is doing work against the surroundings which in this case or the uh, which in this case is the atmosphere. Okay. So, the air in the vessel is actually doing work to expand the balloon. Okay. Now, there is also an important question uh, namely um, on the nature of the balloon material. Okay. So, uh, the question is uh, what difference does it make if I draw the system boundary inside the balloon or outside the balloon? Does it make a difference? The, uh, it will make a difference depending on whether the balloon material is thin and inextensible or not. If the balloon material is thin and inextensible, then like a, a child's toy balloon, then that means that the pressure inside the balloon is the same as atmospheric pressure because the material is thin, it cannot really support a pressure difference. So, which means that whether I draw the system boundary inside the balloon or outside the balloon makes no difference. On the other hand, if the balloon were to be uh, uh, made of uh, say uh, uh, rubber or some other material which is elastic in nature, let us say it is made of rubber sheet, then the pressure inside the balloon can be higher than the pressure outside the balloon which means that <coughs> if I draw the system boundary inside the uh, balloon, then I get a certain work interaction which is uh, the sum of the work done to push the atmosphere aside plus the work done to stretch the balloon. Okay. Because I have drawn the system boundary on the inside of the balloon, the work interaction that I calculate for the system will be the sum of both these work components. So, <coughs> as the uh, balloon expands, uh, as the air inflates the balloon, the balloon expands. If I draw the system boundary on the inside like this, then the work interaction for this system or the work that is done by this system is the sum of the work that it is required to push the atmosphere aside plus stretch the balloon. Now, if I draw the boundary on the outside, then the work interaction for the system will be the work that is required just to push the atmosphere aside. 
So, the work that is actually the energy that is required to stretch the balloon material will be accounted for in a different way eventually when we write down the first law of thermodynamics. But the important point here is that the work interaction depends on where you draw the system boundary and it also depends on the interaction. So, if the balloon material is thin and inelastic then it does not matter. Otherwise, if you draw it on the inside we get a certain value for the work interaction, if you draw it on the outside then we get a certain value for the interaction. So, this also shows clearly that work is very much an interaction of the system with the surroundings. Both the nature of the uh, uh, work as well as the magnitude of the work depend on where you draw the system boundary. That is a very, very important concept to, uh, to bear in mind that work is an interaction of the system with the surroundings. So, as we said earlier, in case the balloon material is elastic, the uh, work done by the air is partly utilized to stretch the balloon material and partly used to push the atmosphere aside. So, the total work is the sum of both these in case the system boundary is drawn on the inside. And as we mentioned in the previous, as I mentioned already, in both the cases, the process is guaranteed to take place slowly by the presence of the valve, which provides uh, resistance so that the process can take place slowly. And again, unlike in the previous example, the piston cylinder example, here different parts of the system, uh, namely the air inside the cylinder and the air inside the balloon are at different pressures as we already pointed out. So, the air inside the cylinder is at a higher pressure, the air in the balloon uh, in case it is thin and inelastic is actually at the same pressure as the atmosphere. Okay? Now, for this case also we may define uh, for instance the atmosphere as an appropriate system. So, we may actually do something like this and uh, draw So, the atmosphere may be uh, taken as a system and we may evaluate the work interaction for that system. Again, if additional details are required, then it may not be possible to evaluate those with this system, but uh, I would just like to point out that this is also a valid system. If you want to calculate only the work interaction, this actually uh, probably is a good choice as well. Okay? Uh, Let us let's let us try a slightly different variation of uh, this example and then see how things change. So, here in this example we are doing the opposite of just uh, what we did just now. So, uh, in the balloon example we were inflating a balloon from a uh, vessel filled with high pressure air. In this example, we have an initially evacuated vessel and we are trying to fill it with the air from the atmosphere. Okay? So, we open the valve slightly as I said before, opening the valve slightly ensures that the process takes place slowly with a sufficient uh, resistance and uh, uh, the valve is opened slightly and closed after a certain amount of air, let us say 1 liter of air has flowed inside the cylinder. Notice that if I open the valve all the way, then because the vessel is evacuated, the atmospheric air will rush inside and it would not be possible for us to uh, define an appropriate system whose boundaries are known at all instants in time or whose property values are known at all instants in time, which is why we open the valve just a crack so that the process takes place slowly. So, we would like to uh, carry out an analysis of this particular situation using the system approach. So, let us try to define uh, a system uh, for this case. Now, the system for this case, uh, valid system for this case looks like this. So, notice that um, this actually is that part of the atmosphere which, uh, uh, which we would say is 1 liter of air. Okay. So, uh, so, so we identify arbitrarily 1 liter of air in the atmosphere and we say that that along with this as our initial system. Now, notice that as the process takes place, the uh, volume of this part of the system keeps reducing. Once all the 1000 cc has gone inside, we close the valve. So, there is nothing that is outside the vessel. Okay. Notice that this system 
shown in dashed line always contains the same amount of mass. Initially, it is evacuated, this has 1000 cc of air. Finally, this has that air which has gone inside. So, whatever was here has now gone inside here. Okay. So, this is a valid thermodynamic system and notice that this part of the system boundary deforms whereas the other parts of the system boundary uh, remain stationary and they uh, do not deform. Okay. Now, uh, one thing that we must, uh, uh, we must, one question that we must ask is the, is the following. Uh, how do I define the shape of, uh, uh, of this part of the boundary? I say this is 1000 cc, uh, how do I determine the shape of this part of the system boundary? It turns out that the shape of this part of the system boundary is actually immaterial. As long as it contains, always contains the same amount or the air that is moving in, initially it contains 1000 cc and then uh, the, uh, this part of the boundary deforms. So, it should deform in such a way as to contain that initial air that we identified and uh, until the end of the process. So, as long as it does that, it is a valid system, the exact shape is immaterial. We will actually uh, justify this later. Okay? Now, in contrast to the previous two examples, the previous two examples, we actually started with the air that was initially in the, in the vessel uh, and then we allowed it to undergo a process. Here, we actually have to visualize the process, how the process takes place and then based on the uh, final uh, nature of the system, we actually define uh, or the uh, based on the state of the uh, system at the end of the process that is required, we define the system. In other words, uh, we say that finally, the system is going to contain 1000 cc of air. And because the system has always contained the same amount of uh, mass, we have to use these two facts together and then identify the system. In the earlier two examples, it was easier to do. Here, you have to think things through and then define the system appropriately. Okay. The actual shape of the part of the system boundary that is in the atmosphere uh, at any instant during the process is actually immaterial. We will justify this uh, later. The only requirement as I said is it must initially contain 1000 cc of air and then always contain that air as the uh, boundary deforms. Okay? Now, defined in this manner, the system that we have shown here in grey is a valid thermodynamic system. We can also infer that because this system boundary deforms, work is being done by the atmosphere on the system to push the air inside the vessel. Okay. In contrast to the other two cases where work was done by the system to push the uh, atmosphere aside or stretch the balloon, here the system boundary shrinks which means that work is being done by the atmosphere to push the air inside the uh, system. Notice that work is required to be done to push the air because of the resistance provided by the valve. If the valve is fully open, then there is no resistance and presumably no work interaction, the air will just rush inside. Now, we need to do work to push the air inside because we are demanding that it should be a slow process and the partially open valve provides that resistance. So, by opening the valve only slightly, we provide the required resistance to ensure that the process takes place slowly. Okay. The, the vessel may be initially evacuated, the vessel may initially be at a lower pressure also. It need not be evacuated, it may be at a pressure less than the atmospheric pressure also. In all these cases, the air will rush in if you open the valve fully. So, we make sure that the valve is opened only slightly so that sufficient resistance is provided. So, this makes sure that this part of the system boundary, I am sorry, this part of the system boundary is always known. If you open the valve all the way, initially it may contain 1000 cc, then this 1000 cc, this part of the system boundary will disappear in an instant. We do not know uh, the intermediate uh, uh, positions of the system boundary or the pressure inside this part of the system boundary at the intermediate instance because the uh, air is rushing in at high speed. The pressure may not be uh, the same at all points in the uh, system boundary. It may even be less than atmospheric pressure because it is rushing at high speed. So, the pressure and other properties will not be known at all locations in the system boundary at the intermediate instance in time. So, by defining it like this and by saying that the valve is only partly open, uh, 
are partially open, we ensure that we know the system boundary at all locations and also the properties inside this part of the system at all instants. So, we may also as we just said uh, infer that work is done by the atmosphere to push the air into the vessel against the resistance provided by the valve okay that is um, uh, that is important. So, we now we have seen both uh, type of interactions one where the system uh, does work on the surroundings by expanding other one where work is being done by the surroundings on the system because the system boundary is contracting. So, this is displacement work we will uh, discuss this in more detail later on.